Hi, this is Dr. Roy Kim, your favorite Dr. Kim. This time we're going to be talking about how I choose the best breast augmentation incision for you. And it's a pretty simple answer. For the most part, it's going to be the breast fold incision. Now, I will talk about the other types of incisions, but the breast fold has a huge advantage because it is right on the breast. I'm making a circular pocket for your implants. I have total visualization and total control over that pocket. And it actually has the lowest risk of capsular contracture, a very fancy term for too much scar tissue that forms sort of around your implant. So this is why the breast fold incision is what I strongly prefer and what most plastic surgeons strongly prefer. Another incision you may have heard of is around the areola. Technically, it's not the nipple, although a lot of people call it the nipple incision, rather it's an areolar incision. What's interesting is that it's the same length that has a lot of similarities to the breast fold incision. The areolar incision is about the same length. It takes about the same amount of time in the operating room. It has, as far as I can tell, about the same amount of pain, which isn't that much for recovery. And I have control because I'm right on the breast itself and I have control over the pocket, seeing everything and creating it. The reason why I don't favor it is because I can't get rid of all the bacteria in the milk so specifically, there are bacteria in the areola ducts, the milk ducts of the actual areola and the breast. And if those communicate with the pocket or touch the implant, then you're at an increased risk of infection, you're at increased risk for capsule contracture. That means that you may be long-term at an increased risk of hard tissue forming around your implant. It may look okay, but sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it doesn't look okay, it can actually distort the actual shape of your breast augmentation of breast implants so that it generates pain or discomfort and also it looks a little off. So to avoid that, I tend to avoid the areolar incision. There's another incision which is not often done and that's the underarm or axillary incision. The reason why I don't love it is because I have to create a rectangular pocket, you know, from the underarm towards the circular pocket then I have to create the circular pocket. The instrumentation to create the circular pocket, in my opinion, isn't the easiest or the greatest. It'd be great if there was a really long device. I mean, it'd have to be pretty long to reach from the underarm incision all the way to the base of your breast. Make sure that there's no bleeding. Make sure I'm dissecting the pocket correctly. And then making sure that I have control of all the bleeding and of the size of the pocket. Remove that instrumentation and then put an implant in through you know, a rectangular hallway, if you will, or a tunnel into the circular pocket where the breast implant is going to live. That tunnel will take time to heal. There's going to be a fair amount of swelling over it. It's at the edge of your pec, just underneath your shoulder. And that usually sticks around for a couple months. Now, I guess in theory that the implant can go into the tunnel and then sort of go towards your underarm. I've never seen that. I really haven't heard of it. And I'm sure it has happened. I'm just saying in general that that would be uncommon. That tunnel will close down over time, but you have to be patient it does close down over a month or two or three. It's not like it's gonna close down in a week or so. A very rare incision, one that I've done in the past, but I can't really do today, is the belly button incision. So, it may sound strange, but you can actually make a curved incision, sort of spread the skin around, and create a tunnel from the belly button on the right, on the left, towards the breast area, and then create circular pockets with special instrumentation for the breast. Then you take out the instrumentation and you put in a saline implant. Now, if you know anything about saline implants, you know they can be folded. They are not filled before we put them into the patient's body. So we would put them in in a folded fashion with a very long fill tube, fill it with saline solution, and then you can have breast augmentation through the belly button incision. The reason why it's a lot less popular is basically because nobody really uses saline breast implants for the most part in breast augmentation. Silicone, I think, is a superior product in terms of the way it looks and feels. Saline, hey, it's FDA approved, it's safe. It's just that it doesn't feel as good. There's an increased risk of rippling or wrinkling, which means you can see or feel the edge of the saline implant. And and they're not commonly done in the US. So that's why after listening to all of these options, I do think that the breast fold incision is the best one for you. So if you have any questions about the inframammary fold incision, the breast fold incision for breast augmentation, please let me know in the comments below. And thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.